Much different debate than the first one. President Obama, did he do what he had to do? Richard. Well, I think uh, it was a great, de great night. It was a great debate. It was obviously a great night for the president. I think he made a strong defense of what he's been trying to do. Uh, and most importantly, he demonstrated that the Romney, that voters should not trust the Romney plan because it doesn't add up. I think it was a very good night for President Obama. Uh, he stopped the bleeding. He brought in his A-game. I thought it was a good night for Mitt Romney, but it was a much better night for President Obama. And I think part of it is because he was being compared to Obama in the first debate. And because also there were much lower expectations this time on President Obama than there had been in the first debate. Uh, on expectations, uh, you know, I should just jump right in here. A CNN post-debate poll showed that President Obama exceeded expectations of those watching. The numbers are pretty staggering here. 73% said he did a better job than expected. 37% said the same of Mitt Romney. Um, does that make a difference, Roland? Of course it makes a difference. And you saw the polling data after the first debate, even in California, where Mitt Romney picked up eight points in various polls. So the president needed this particular performance, but also he needed to show the contrast between his record as well as Mitt Romney's record. He didn't do it in the first debate. Also thought body language was also very important. I, I'm laughing this morning when I see these analysts say, oh, the president appeared to be angry. First of all, to be firm is not angry. To be passionate is not angry. To be concise is not angry. Uh, and so there were moments literally where Mitt Romney turned his back to the audience and was trying to get the president and the president very deftly pretty much looked at him, brushed him off and walked away from him and kept engaging the person who asked the question. That showed a difference with tactic in terms of what did you come there to do? Romney wanted to go on the attack with the president. The president said, I'll engage the people asking questions. We talked a lot about format here because this was a different type format, a town hall format. A lot of people thought that this was better suited for President Obama. How do you think, Anna, that uh, Mitt Romney did this type of format? You know, I, I think he made a mistake. Uh, and I think he made a mistake because he tried to play moderator way too much. And he has a tendency to do this, and it looks awkward every Candy time he does it. You, this morning. you know, he was, he was uh, trying to do two things. First, he was trying to enforce the rules himself. And then he also took on the job of asking President Obama the questions directly. And when that happens, you give President Obama a second shot at responding. And I think it's part of the reason why you saw that he, President Obama got four more minutes of time to respond than Mitt Romney did during the entire debate. So I wish he'd stick to debating and not to moderating. I see Roland over there, you know, he, oh, Dan, Dan. No, I was just going to say that, that it's interesting because talking to Romney aides before this debate, I was told that they really did focus a lot in prep on the style, on the format, knowing that every move that he makes is going to be judged vis-a-vis -vis where the president is, the, the, the facial expression that he makes vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the voter. And it really didn't come across as if he practiced it because, right. or, you know, the, the flip side of that is he did practice it and this, they've just decided that this is completely about getting the base out and the base wants to see an aggressive Mitt Romney, just like the Democratic base wants to see the same from well, the president. Interesting. I think I, I, the I, most I amazing two moments were, were the moment where um, uh, he uh, mistook the Terra moment, the Libya moment, was an amazing moment which you, which you had to have practiced let's, and then uh, he got wrong. Let's, let's play that, Richard, because you're bringing that up now. That was a huge moment in this debate, one that people talked about all night and immediately after. Let's play that right now. This deals with the attack uh, on the, the consulate in Benghazi and then how President Obama responded to it. Let's listen. The day after the attack, Governor, I stood in the Rose Garden and I told the American people and the world that we were going to find out exactly what happened that this was an act of terror. And I also said that we're going to hunt down those who committed this crime. I, I want to make sure we get that for the record, because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little louder, he Candy? He, he did call it an act of terror. What you actually don't even see there is Mitt Romney flat out saying, you know, I, I, I want to check the record here. He called it an act of terror. He called it an act of terror. Clearly, Romney actually, I don't think, knew but, that but, Obama said. But I think even more important than that, I think in terms of equal basis, it was interesting. When you saw the president turn to him, when he made it clear, I am the president. And in many ways, you saw the president lecturing Romney. This is how a president responds. And then he stops and simply turns and walks away and goes back to his seat. I mean, so Romney's sitting there going, 
I basically just got put in check by the president. It Anna, was, it you, was an amazing moment. That moment. How do you explain it? I think the president had a very good, solid, succinct uh, answer. I think he took ownership of indignation mm -hmm. and went on the offensive first. I, I was disappointed by the, by the response uh, from Romney. I thought, he, you know, we knew this was going to come up. I think he flubbed it. He could have yeah, gone well, on the offensive big time. President Obama is vulnerable on this. But Mitt Romney did not exploit it. Well, he, the president was obviously very prepared with that answer. And, you know, to Dana's point, uh, Mitt Romney had to know that that was oh. going to come up. That was the most it, important. They were all right. hitting that all day for three days. It was a gimme for Romney. Romney. It, it, was, it was a gimme, gimme for Romney. And uh, I talked to some Romney advisors who were involved in his prep right afterwards. Uh, who, you know, were kind of trying to defend the, the broader message, if you sort of that, the first answer that he gave, he did talk about what they wanted him to talk about, about the fact that, uh, that there was really no protest, about the fact that the, that the intelligence was, was it different, was it not, uh, that the security was, was bad. But all of that got lost in the whole fight over whether or not the president did or didn't say something in the Rose Garden. Well, there were a lot of those moments last night. I want to play some more. The New York Times headline called it a bare fist rematch. So let's take a look at some of the most fiery moments. How much did you cut licenses and permits on federal Governor, land and federal waters? Governor Romney, here's what we did. There were a whole bunch of oil companies. I had a question, and the question you, was how much want, did you cut them you by? You want me to answer How the much question? did you cut them I'm by? Ha I'm happy to answer the question. All right, and it is? Here's what happened. Mr. President, have and you looked at your pension? Daddy, have you looked at your pension? I've got to say. Uh, Mr. Pen yeah. President, have you looked at your pension? You know, I, I don't look at my pension. It's not as big as yours, so it doesn't well, take let as me long. Let me, give you some, the, let, me give, uh, let me give you some advice. I don't check it that often. So Dana just said, I thought they were going to start a fight. I mean, it really was very contentious at times. So who does this hurt? Who does it help? You know, you were talking about likability, the likability numbers earlier. Did this fighting favor one candidate over the other? First of all, Dan, this reminded me of the 2000 debate. I was just thinking. Al Gore and, and, and George W. Bush, where all of a sudden, there were moments where literally, I remember the reaction of Governor Bush was like, dude, why are you standing right next to me, that, this close to me? Yeah. Uh, and so I thought <laughs> Romney, who had high unfavorable ratings, I think this may have hurt his likability because he, to your point, he was pressing so much. He never really gave himself a chance to come across as being a really likable person. He even wouldn't even answer several of the questions the audience was asking. At the AK-47 question, he goes talking about AK-47s in America. He's talking about Mexico. And I get fast and furious, but I'm sure that woman is saying, I'm sorry, can you please get back to my question? No, there, were also, there were also questions that President Obama didn't answer. He got asked very specifically. Who is responsible for denying the request for additional security in Benghazi? And I didn't hear an answer to that. Yeah, but that I think, got lost. I think that President got Obama got, a, got, a, got some funny shots in. I think he got the laugh lines in, and I think that uh, that, that was helpful to them. But, uh, you know, I think they both came across as fairly likable. Well, can I, can I just say also, or I thought the most, the, <laughs> the most important moment was right at the very end when Mitt Romney incredibly brings up the 47 percent by, right. by making that reference to 100 percent and then knowing that president obama would have the last word president obama just went in and i mean he gave at the end of it the most beautiful succinct crisp answer which was a defense of why he is entitled to a second term referencing that 47 percent i mean the democrats were Pretty happy I, want, I want to bring up one last thing we haven't had a chance to talk about. You talked about the humor. Because a lot's been made since the debate of, of Mitt Romney's binders. Uh, we heard it in Dana's piece <laughs> at, at, earlier. He was talking about his efforts to get women more involved with the companies he worked in. And he said something with, I think, which I think raised some eyebrows. I think we can listen to that here. And I said, well, gosh, can't we, can't we find some, some women that are also qualified? And, uh, and so we, we took a concerted effort to go out and find women who had backgrounds that could be qualified to become members of our cabinet. I went to a number of women's groups and said, can you help us find folks? And they brought us whole binders full of, uh, of women. The Bind women here have been talking about this quite a bit this morning. Okay, so let's I'm just make it clear, it's not mail order brides. <laughs> <laughs> People applying for jobs. But, 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 the question was equal pay for women. And the issue is 
Sure, you can hire a woman, but are you going to pay a woman a fair wage? And the president was effective by making it clear this is not a women's issue, it's a family issue, and men should also be outraged. Look, I have a wife, I have nine nieces, and I want my nine nieces to, ha to be able to make the same amount of money. Romney would not answer that question. And if you're a woman sitting there saying, fine, give me a job, but are you going to pay me less? I tell you something, both, uh, both the answers had me with, and I don't know about, uh, about you two ladies, but had me a little bit with my eyes rolling to the back of my head. I counted the word women 18 times in that uh, Romney answer. I counted it something like 12 times when it was Obama's time to respond. Had it been the word for a drinking game, we'd all have died of alcohol <laughs> poisoning last night. Except it's, for those of us who don't drink. But it's an amazing, <laughs> the last word. Well, that, got the last that word. answer is an amazing example of why these debates are important because here Governor Romney thought he was giving an answer that would be helpful to him, but in fact by telling the story of his history with trying to hire women and, and so forth, uh, you know, really kind of showed the approach that he and his team have on these things. You know, that, that they somehow have to make a special effort to find qualified women because they're not in plain sight. I mean, that's what I thought was amazing. Did he feel he, uh, it was a, a, a response that had some pandering in it? Well, I just felt the that two? there was really no response. I mean, what he was asked specifically was about equal pay and legislation, right. and he never answered that question. So it left you wanting a real answer, I think, at the end of the day. Richard Socarides, Anna Navarro, <laughs> Dana Bash, Roland Martin, we're all here. <laughs> great to have you guys. A great discussion. We're going to talk a lot more about like this. Like Animal House. <laughs> a lot like Animal House. Toga. Now, this topic did not come up at all at the debate last